Welcome to ECT TV Episode 8. So in today's episode, we are going to be thinking spring. So here in the United States, we are so close to spring that I can almost taste it. Now, we do have another sto snowstorm that should be starting sometime tonight, but I'm not going to let that get me down. I am going to make a spring-themed necklace. I'm going to teach you how to do it, too. So right now, I am so excited for spring to get started. As you may have noticed in the past couple episodes, winter has really drugged me down this year. With all the snow and record-breaking cold weather we've had, um, I'm ready to just let all that winter stuff go and move on into spring. So in honor of that, we're going to be making a beautiful spring-themed necklace today. I'm going to show you how to make it. and. I was kind of thinking about how if you bring this sort of thing into your life, even in winter, so you wear maybe a little cherry necklace or dress in a way that makes you feel more cheerful, it actually helps with that mood too. So even if you're still in the dead of winter, Maybe if you put on a little spring necklace, it's going to help you feel a little better. Or even in the summer, having beautiful jewelry makes you feel great. You feel more confident. You feel put together. It puts a little spring in your step. So that's what we're going to do today is make this necklace. And I just have a quote to kind of help us through the rest of winter and get us into spring. And the quote is this. In the depth of winter, I finally learned there was in me an invincible summer. And that's a quote by Albert Camus. So this is what you'll need to make your necklace. This necklace takes about 20 bead dangles. So you'll need enough beads to make 20 bead dangles. Um, and you may want some bead caps and things to make it prettier, which I'll show you a little bit more of. Um, and I chose pink and green as my main colors. Um, there's a little blue in there too. But just because it kind of reminds me of spring and flowers. And then you'll want some charms to add. So I have a bunch of little bee charms and birds and some leaves. Um, you might, there's a, I have a flower too. You might want to add some floral. Um, previously I've used a lot of leaf charms which I really liked. Butterflies, whatever you want, whatever you might have in your collection. Um, if you don't have these charms that's okay. You don't actually have to add them. I just need to add a little bit of extra to it if you would like to. And then you'll need a clasp. And a whole bunch of jump rings. You're going to need chain. Um, you'll need your head pins for uh, making bead dangles. And then I wanted to show you what I use kind of for the top to bring everything together. I have these little pewter pieces. It has a spot for two. You can attach two. And what I actually do is attach the chain right to them and it dangles down. Um, if you do not have something like this, like bead like a cone would work well and you can kind of make it like a tassel so you would make 
make your two little chains full of bead dangles and I'll, sh I'll show you how to do this of course um, so maybe you have something like this just something for the top that kind of brings everything together and then the tools you'll need are round nose pliers chain nose pliers and then another pair of pliers such as bent nose pliers and then your wire cutters. So your first step is to start making bead dangles for your necklace and like I said you're going to need about 20 you can make use less or you could add more if you want it to be a little fuller um, if you want it to be a little more dainty then maybe make less but so um, I've showed you how to make a bead dangle in the last two episodes but I'll kind of show you again um, for this one, I'm going to add oops, a little seed bead, and then this is a, a bead cap, so this is just like a little metal piece that kind of makes your bead just look a little prettier, so it goes like right against there, and I'm going to put one on the other side. And then another little tiny seed bead. So that's kind of cute. And then we're just going to go ahead and make a bead dangle. Which, if you need help with this, I'd say go back to the last two episodes. Episode 7 and episode 6. And so you're just going to do this. 20 times. Alright, so go ahead and make all your bead dangles. Alright, so here I have all my bead dangles. I made about 20 of them. So we're ready to move on to the next step, um, which is attaching them to them to be arranged before I start doing that. Um, so I'm going to kind of pick a bigger one, a bigger bead for the bottom. And, you know, these do not need to be any sort of, you know, they don't need to be symmetrical. But, you know, you probably don't want all the same bead. Like, I have several of these little flower beads, so I'll probably kind of split them up between each side. You know, make sure I get some of my green on each side and some of my pink on each side. Kind of split them up evenly. Alright, so I kind of have a general idea of what I'm doing here. Alright, and now I'm going to start attaching the bead dangles to the chain. So I want to show you to make sure you know how to open up a jump ring properly. So I'm actually going to show you using a 7 millimeter jump ring, um, even though I'm going to use a 4 millimeter for this project. So let me sort of... So on a jump ring, you'll find a little opening. So sometimes it's hard to see, especially on small jump rings. So first find that. And then you're going to position your two pairs of pliers on either side. Bent nose pliers are great for opening jump rings but if you don't have bent nose you can use um, chain nose or you know maybe square pliers or something like that so I'll just show you using those since I have them in my hand you put you line up your pliers on either side so that the opening is in the middle and then with one pair of pliers, you're going to pull toward you. 
And with the other side, you're going to go away. And you're going to maintain this circle, but just open it up. So, just, that's what you do. So, you don't pull apart this way. You just go forward and backward. And then to close, so you would put your bead dangle on here and attach it to the chain. And then to close the jump ring, you just kind of do the opposite. But I like to go back and forth a couple of times and you will feel the two ends meeting and touching and it will almost feel like it's clicking in. And it doesn't always feel that way, but if you feel that, then you know you got it. So you just sort of wiggle it around till it's closed and that is how you do it. So then for our necklace here, we're going to use four millimeter jump rings and I like to open up as many as I need for a project at one time. And then I'm going to just start with my first bead at the very end. And I'm starting with a large one at the end. And just close. And then this, really you can do this any way you want. I'm probably going to put a bead dangle on every single link here in my chain. But, you know, you can choose how you want to do that. You don't necessarily need them that close together. If you're using less beads, you might want to try every other link. And you just sort of, as you're going, you'll see how the, the dangles are laying. So you kind of want to choose opposite sides for, you know, each bead dangle. Oops. So just continue until you get all of your beads on, for both chain, both pieces of chain complete. So as you can see, I now have my two chains that have the bead dangles attached to it. And so the next step is to add all the little charms to it. So just you're just going to attach them in the same way you attach the bead dangles. Um, add jump rings and then just you're just going to sort of randomly add these to the piece wherever you feel like you would like to add them. And just you know to add a little bit more character to your necklace. So go ahead and do that. Now once you have everything added that you wanted to add, all your little dangles and charms, it's time to add the two chains to your top piece. So I'm using this floral piece, it's pewter, and it has two little places here in the back. So I'm just going to use, I'm actually opting to use seven millimeter jump rings and I'm going to attach that. I'm just going to attach the chain and I'm going to trim off this extra chain but I'm going to first um, attach this and see how it lays before I decide to do that. So that's one side. Oops. And here is the other side. And I just want to check just because I made my chains really chunky. Um, make sure everything lays right before I cut off any extra chain. Okay. So, there it is. And I think it pretty much looks good. Oops. Can't keep a hold of it. Um, and I say that because since it's chunky, if it was too close 
to the top it might not look quite right so this extra chain I have I'm just gonna trim off and the link above where it attaches this side all tangled up here. There we go. Okay. Now to finish this, we just need to add the chain to go around our neck. So I'm just going to loosely, I know you can't see me right now, loosely measuring around my neck. get the size here and then again I'm just going to take jump rings and attach the chain in to the exact same spot actually that I just attached the other chain so we're gonna go through here now when you wear this, the chain that you're, that goes around your neck, this jump ring goes up, the other jump rings go down, so it all just works out just nicely. So, add the chain, close the jump ring. And then we have the other side. And then close this jump ring. Alright, and now we have necklace here. And this is how I like to make my necklaces. I attach each end and then I find the middle and cut the chain. And then you just add your clasp to the top. So I'm just adding the clasp with some jump rings. It's one side. Here's the other side. And then you have a finished garden necklace. So I hope you liked learning how to make the garden necklace. And remember, no matter where you are, spring is coming soon. To learn more about this necklace, you can go to my website. The link will be down below the video. And to get future episodes of ECT TV delivered to you via PDF, make sure you sign up for my newsletter while you're there. Have a great week. Creativity through making jewelry is my e-course for helping you find your creativity or rediscover your creativity, learn to make jewelry, and express your creativity through making jewelry. Right now, I am in the process of reworking it adding to it and updating this e-course and the update is almost ready and it will be ready in March and I'm so excited to re-release it out into the world.
Right now, this e-course is $49. However, with the changes, the price will be going up to $67. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So if this is something you might be interested in, I suggest that you get in, on it, get in on it now and then you'll have access to all the updates when they are ready. You have lifetime access to the e-course, so no matter how many changes I do to it, how many updates, how much I add to it, how much the price goes up, you already have it. You don't ever have to pay for it again. So head on over to the website at www.rediscoveryourcreativity.wordpress.com and learn about it. There is a free little mini week uh, there for you to test out. Give it a try and sign up and look for the updates in March.